Let's take a quick look at the Apache uh, log of the accesses. And to do that, uh, I'll use my browser to access our server several times. Uh, first, to make it a little bit more interesting, I've created a couple extra pages. So remember the, the base directory for the website content is under slash var slash www slash html. And the index.html page there is the default page for Apache. I've created a subdirectory called test. And inside there, I've got two files, index.html, which includes a link to page2.html, and, and which comes back to index.html. So that's my website. If I go to my client and open that website using my web browser links, And I'll go direct to the URL, as I know the subdirectory is test. And that takes me to the index page. Note that I typed in the URL of slash test. I didn't type slash test slash index.html. And it's standard for Apache and most other web servers. When you request a directory, I actually requested test forward slash. The web server will check if there's a file in there, the index file, index.html, and if there is, it will send back that page. Otherwise, it may send back a directory listing, but it's normally that if there's an index.html, the web server sends back that, which is what's happened here. It sent back our index.html, which just contains a heading, a line of text, and then uh, go to page two. In links, I can use my up, and down to go between links, but unfortunately there's only one link here, the yellow page two. To follow that link, I can press space or the right arrow. And I press the right arrow and I follow the, the, the link. That triggered my browser to request page two and the server has sent that back. And now I see page two. And my index link in yellow is highlighted if I press right key, I follow it again and I request index.html and it takes me back there. So I've accessed the website a couple of times. I can queue to quit in links. And now we'll go to our web server and look at the log. And that's in slash var slash log slash Apache 2. And there are three different logs shown here. The one of interest is the access.log. Uh, the error log is when we, um, when Apache starts up or if there are errors with the web server, they'll be put in there and hopefully you will not need to, to use that. But if there are problems with your web server, you may look in the error log. And the other vhost access.log is used in, in, uh, if there are different virtual hosts uh, on the system. We want access.log, which is just a text file. And I'll open it in Vi. Uh, it's a text file where each line represents an access to the web server. Every time someone accesses the web server, they send a request using HTTP to the web server. The web server sends back a response. Then one line is put into this log file to the end of the file. So we'll inspect one of those lines and we'll look at uh, the last couple of lines, the last three in our case. Uh, there are some of the early accesses. I'll just quit out of that. Uh, sorry. Quit out of that. And I'll just use tail to look at the last three lines of access log. They're the ones of interest because I know they're the ones when I use my Lynx web browser on the client to access the web server. There are actually three lines here, but because they're so long, they are wrap around. So this is the first line. This is the second line. And the third line corresponding to three accesses to the website. Let's go through the first one. Uh, the IP address of the client that accessed our web server. 
These two are empty fields, so they're space separated fields in this uh, file, in this uh, entry, and they don't have a value. We will see later one of them is related to it. Well, we won't see in this demo, but uh, if you have logins, usernames and passwords, the username may be stored there. The next is the date and time that that request was received, and that's in square brackets here. So we know when that request uh, occurred. The next, and just be careful, it's in, enclosed in double quotes. This is the next field. This is the summary of the request that came from the client. The client said, get slash test slash. Because if you remember in links, that's what I typed in. Uh, I typed in open my browser access using HTTP www.example.com, i.e. my web server, and request the path slash test slash. So that's what's sent to the web server. And using protocol HTTP version 1.0. The server received that request and sends back a response depending upon whether it was successful or not. And HTTP has a number of status or response status codes. And the most common one we'll see is 200 OK when everything is OK. Another one you may see is 404 not found. So this is saying response was OK. This is the size of the response. The HTTP response, response was 428 bytes long. This field is empty. The dash is the referrer field. We'll see it in the next two examples. And this long last field is an identifier of the web browser, referred to as the user agent. It's saying the web browser identified itself as links version 2.89, da, 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 running with some options, SSL, GNU, TLS, and so on. So this was set by the web browser when it sent the request to the web server. So now the server knows something about who accessed and also what software access, what was running, what browser was running. But noting that a browser could potentially change that if they want to hide that detail. So this was a request for slash test slash. A, sent, a response was sent back 200 OK, including the web page requested, which we saw was the index.html file. Because of this feature, if you request a directory, normally the index.html file is sent back. Then about a minute later, I followed that link to page two. So we see similar information, but a request to slash test slash page two.html. And 200 OK, the page two was sent back. And note we have this referrer field set here, where it wasn't set in the first one. This field, the referrer field, indicates uh, if we followed a link to get to page two, where did we come from? What page did we come from when we clicked on that link, which in this case was the original test URL. So to get to, to page two, we came from the original test. And in the third case, to get back to index.html, we clicked on that link to go to index. And if you looked in the source code, it would be a link to index.html, not to slash test slash. And the referrer in that case was page two. The referrer is useful to give statistics to the web ser server operator about where did someone come from to get to their website and how do they traverse through the web website. For example, if someone uh, visited your website via a link in the Google search results, the referrer here may be uh, a reference to Google. So you would know that to get to my website, they come via Google, and that can be useful information for the website operator. So a brief summary of the log file, the access log file, which is maintained by uh, the Apache web server, which can provide useful statistics for operating that web server.